topic, my topic was on health disparities and physician implicit, bi implicit bias uh, related to it causing health care disparities within African Americans. So to get the class um, familiar with what was going on, I decided to get a paper race IET and give it to the class and basically to kind of introduce them to what I'm actually going to be talking about. Next, um, I want to start with the introduction with a video about healthcare disparities in the United States. Caucasians. 
So for the purpose of this PowerPoint and my study, I like to define a couple things related to my study area. So healthcare is the services provided um, in traditional healthcare settings. Uh, they include public and private um, healthcare services are going to be the provision of preventative, diagnostic, rehabilitative, and therapeutic, ther therapeutic medicine or health services in individuals or populations. Quality of care is going to be the degree in which health services for individuals and populations increase and the likelihood of desired health outcomes and which are consistent with current professional knowledge. Um, the disparities, when we talk about disparities in healthcare, it's going to re refer to the racial or ethnic differences in the quality of care that are not due to access related factors or clinical needs, preferences, and appropriateness of intervention. So, the leading causes of death in African Americans is going to be heart disease, cancer, stroke, unintentional injuries. Diabetes, chronic lower respiratory disease, kidney disease, homicide, sepsis, and Alzheimer's disease. And out of this list, the majority of the leading causes of death are healthcare related. Um, so the disparities are going to be heart disease, cancer, cerebrovascular disease, HIV, and AIDS cardiovascular disease, the health gap in the treatment of minorities compared to whites. Um, thrombolytic therapy is twice as likely to be received by individuals that are white than blacks. And here, included with this, is going to be just the percentage of the health gap between racial minorities and whites. So some statistics, African Americans in 2009 had the largest death rate from heart disease and stroke compared with other racial and ethnic populations. They were also found across age groups younger than 85, 85 years of age. From 2007 to 2010, hypertension is amongst uh, the largest African Americans who are 65 years and older. Um, infants of African American women in 2008 had the largest death rate, more than twice among infants of white women. So, in talking about healthcare disparities among racial groups, another thing that to consider is the economic um, burden of having racial uh, health inequalities in the U.S. So, racial ethnic disparities in health and healthcare impose costs on many aspects of society that we don't even really realize. Um, it can be related to health care costs and indirect costs, such as loss of productivity. So researchers uh, Thomas A. Levesque, Daryl Gaston, and Patrick Richard wanted to do an analysis to see how it actually impacts um, the economy of the U.S. So they looked at three sets of analysis. They looked at direct medical costs, indirect care costs, and cost of premature death. So the findings show that if we were to eliminate health care disparities for minorities, the direct medical care expenditures would be about $230 billion. Indirect care costs associated with illness and premature death would be more than uh, $1 trillion for years 2003 and 2006. Premature death? Uh, 95 of indirect costs of health inequalities, which equal 957.5 billion. And more than 59% of these excess expenditures were attributed to African Americans. So, health inequalities among African Americans led to 135.9 billion in excess direct medical costs between 2003 to 2006. Okay, so as far as some different causes, we're going to talk about
about stereotypes, and stereotypes are defined as well-learned sets of associations between some traits and social groups. Uh, they're thought to be uncontrolled automatic processes. So Devon um, compared white participants that were explicitly prejudiced towards blacks and individuals that were more equal in their beliefs. When the participants were asked to list stereotypes of groups, they were both able to compose a list of common cultural stereotypes. So after exposure, words related after exposure to the words related to the stereotypes, high and low people um, that participated showed equal uncertainty to the behavior of a black character in a net as hostile. So the importance of this literature is to show that just being exposed or knowing or being aware of those stereotypes can change your behavior. So part two of this study is they asked the participants to write their thoughts about black Americans. So the findings showed that people who were low in their prejudice belief have views that were more equal, egalitarian. Um, high prejudice uh, people created more negative words related to stereotypes of blacks. So common cultural experiences create awareness of stereotypes which can be automatically activated, influencing your judgment. And looking at stereotypes and behavior, one of the things to think about too is the patient and the person. And so we're going to talk about how internalizing happens in African Americans. So the activation of stereotypes can be automatic because of how the memory pairs between stereotypes and behaviors. Um, and a lot of the times it causes the individual who has that stereotype, um, it causes them to act out or conform to that linked stereotype. So behaviors that conform to the stereotype are not exclusive strictly to stigmatized racial groups, but are seen in a majority of the time as stereotype racial minorities. And basically that's saying that most of the stereotypes that are negative occur mostly with minority groups. So the majority group might not act out their stereotype because it's not negatively seen. Society. So, studies in which researchers presented the crime to participants without conscious awareness reported a relationship in stereotype consistent behavior and presented to the target group, but not in the non target group. So, over the past couple of years, there have been different topics related to why healthcare disparities exist. What is the main contributor? What's the main factor? What can we do to eliminate one so all racial groups get equal care? So some of these factors have been social factors such as highly, such as the high, higher likelihood of being uninsured for blacks and Latinos, uh, transportation in inner cities, discrimination, cultural and linguistic literacy barriers, and overrepresentation of minorities and Medicaid health plans restrictive payment policies. So one thing that was important to some researchers were controlling those areas. And if we control those areas, would health care disparities still be relevant in the African American community? So we just assume that even when these social factors are ruled out by controls or design, black patients are treated differently than white patients. So what other factors have been overlooked. And so now we're going to go into a video about implicit bias and physicians. Travis, 
implicit bias. Um, implicit bias is created when associations are overlearned. So it is basically the things in your environment um, that you acquire over time and they're, they're symbols to kind of make associations about a certain group. Um, the, in doing that, the familiarization can occur by individual experiences, general depictions of extensive media coverage, or images that represent a certain culture of related groups. So basically anything can actually cause this. And according to the aversive racism theory, people who believe they are not prejudiced have implicit biases, have ex implicit biases express their bias subtle. They try not to have openly bigoted ways that go against the norm. So now in our culture, it's not okay to be openly, overtly racist towards people. But that doesn't change how certain people view minority groups. And now the behavior, what this is saying, according to the video in Gardner, is that the behaviors are more subtle that are biased. So one thing we want to look at is we want to look at the perception of patients, minority patients, with physicians, white physicians. And they found that in 2010, the video uh, found that the perception of an interaction between white physicians and black patients were affected by physicians race bias. Um, so black patients who had white physicians uh, that were higher in implicit racial bias were perceived as less warm and friendly. And a, na a natural observation, so just looking at how people interacted, uh, patients interacted with physicians, uh, time spent talking to them, uh, treatment recommendations, body language, so in their natural observations without any type of manipulation they found, Johnson and colleagues found um, documented physician behavior during real world, real world clinical interactions. What they found is that physicians spent less time with African American patients. Um, they also were more verbally dominant, so when they did have these conversations, they talked more, the patient was didn't get a chance to talk as much, which also affects understanding treatment. Um, it also affects um, how they interpret their medical conditions. So such negative perceptions could alter their behavior in ways that reduce uh, compliance and return for follow-up or trust that thus contribute to disparities in So one of the main things was how do we measure this? How do we measure if someone has a, a bias or a racial bias towards a minority group? So Greenwald and his colleagues uh, came up with the implicit association test. Um, the implicit association test has been widely used now amongst various different studies to measure different things, but they use the IET. Um, uh, to look at the amount of time required for individuals to match what they believe are good and bad characteristics of social groups. Um, so what happens is that two stimuli that represent two target concepts are classified and evaluated in their attributes using two designated keys. Um, there are two pair pairings and the difference between them determines the score of the IET. So you take your explicit and then you take your implicit and whatever scores they have on those, those are subtracted and it shows whether the person has a pro-white bias, pro-black bias, if they're neutral, and it also shows if their explicit is different from their implicit bias. So in using the AIT on physicians, so this, uh, 
Physicians generally have a relatively unpre unprejudiced, explicit attitude towards blacks. However, they generally show strong implicit bias against blacks. So their reported behavior, uh, they are saying that they don't have any racial bias, that they view people and their patients equally, but when they do uh, the IAT and measure for implicit biases, they find that they're, they do have a strong preference for white. So in a study which measured implicit race bias in pediatricians, the physicians were given similar nets for different social statuses that randomly displayed white patients. The results showed that physicians with high implicit pro-white bias disagreed more with the standard of care than people with low level of bias. So in another study in 2010, they examined implicit race bias in physicians as a whole using data from Harvard's Project Implicit website. So seven found that out of the 2,535 participants who reported having a medical degree showed the highest pro-white bias. Um, and he also found that the implicit race bias varies by physician, race, and gender. The presence of pro-white bias was significant among physicians of all racial groups except African Americans who were shown to, have to be neutral in their bias. So basically, a lot of that they're saying has to do with society, which is teaching or showing that white or that perception that white is better has affected different racial groups of so they wanted to look at physician treatment decisions to see if, if your implicit bias or implicit bias of physicians affect how they treat their patients or their decisions to treat their patients for short-term care or long-term care. So Green uh, and his colleagues in 2007 demonstrated that providers' implicit attitudes about race may contribute to the disparity in care of patients with acute coronary syndrome. Um, they looked at this because, once again, this is an actual you know, disparity seen among African Americans. And researchers examined the biases of healthcare professionals and how it affected the results of treatment. The purpose of the study was to test if implicit race, racial bias could be found in physicians. Bias predicted Homolysis recommendations given to black and white patients with acute coronary syndrome. The IT, IT scores showed that anti black bias on race preference significantly increased as the decision for treatment decreased. So that was like groundbreaking research because it actually did show that when all the factors are controlled and this one specific disease, that treatment. It, it varies based on the color of skin, even when all the factors are controlled. So the current research basically is focusing on examining more and more specific issues that are uh, really big as far as the African American community. And so they're looking at specific minority-related diseases and examining racial bias. And Amherst in 2014, which is the most current as far as uh, examining physician bias, looked at patients with lupus. Um, she focused on decision -making, the decision-making process and treatment recommendations for women patients. Um, she looked at SLE, lupus nephritis, when patients only different were differentiated by race. And the treatment recommendations uh, basically that she looked at were the prescription additions or changes, further testing, follow-up visit times, and specialist referrals. And all these are important because if there's a gap between follow-up and recommendations 
or the level of prescription drugs you're given, that can completely change how you are in your health. And if a physician is treating the same people and one patient is black and one patient is white, but they're, they're not recommending follow-up treatments, they're not giving the right prescriptions, that can significantly put an end to someone's life or prolong what they're experiencing as far as negative uh, symptoms in their health. So what she found was that there was no data to support high implicit bias and no treatment differences in black and white. There was no difference in different symptoms as causing a difference. The ratings of the patients showed no difference between black and white, and white patients. Patients were not rated lower than whites with regard to personal characteristics, intelligence, knowledge, and compliance. Non-significant negative, not positive relationships between personal characteristics assessment and treatment recommendations. So basically she did not find anything that would suggest that because of implicit bias that it, differ, it differentiated between black and white patients with lupus. So the limitations that I found with the literature that is out there is that when research has been conducted on physicians of another race, the findings were combined with white Americans. The focus on focusing on majority race physicians. And the issue is that bias is not solely just about white physicians. And that, you know, white physicians are not the only one that go to medical school. White physicians are not the only one practicing in healthcare. Although there are a low level of minority physicians, it is not just a majority problem. So, once again, implicit racial bias is not only a white physician issue. It needs to be examined by every type of way so we can compare and actually make use to what's being studied and applied. In specialties, there's a need to look at more physicians in different specialties uh, that are practicing um, even at the same hospital, as well as comparing locations, because location does matter. If you're in a rural area with not a lot of people, or if you're in a big city, that can impact how healthcare is. Being in Mississippi, it's very different uh, in you know their access to care, their access to food. Different environmental factors are different where you go, so there definitely needs to be a comparison of how physicians treat their patients in different locations. Um, and low-income areas need to be assessed. A lot of the studies look at schools that are really, really, like John Hopkins, these academic um, medical centers that get a lot of money and where the health disparity is, is in a lot of places where there is low, low income. So that is definitely something that needs to be assessed. So my experiment, um, I want to expand on past literature to examine racial bias in physicians. Um, I wanted to use the current, uh, current study for the basis of my experiment. And instead of one of the recommendations for, for the research was to get a larger sample because she was unable to. So one of the suggestions was that a larger sample be used to see if there was any change in findings. Um, in looking at stereotypes in the video study, priming has also indicated that to be a strong correlation. So I wanted to use priming um, because it's not being used in a study with implicit racial bias and treatment recommendations. So my hypothesis is that high implicit racial bias when used with priming techniques will affect physician treatment decisions for African Americans with SLE. So for manipulation, my independent variable will be hostile or friendly black confederate. Um, and the dependent variable will be score on I 
Y, and Z, and treatment recommendations. So for my plan of study, um, I would like to begin January 12, 2016. I'm going to end March 12, 2017 to give myself enough time to get participants, quality participants, uh, and so I could use a larger sample. Um, I'm looking at getting 350 participants. Um, there will be African Americans and Caucasians that, uh, physicians that I'm looking at. Um, my location is going to be in rural Mississippi, primarily Hines County. Um, lupus and patients, um, I decided to stick with that because there is probably, it's prevalent in the African American women um, in the community and um, it can be passed to offspring. Um, and another issue that is a disparity in healthcare in African Americans is the rate of death for offspring. And I think there may be a link between those as well. Um, so it may be a factor in premature birth disparity in the black community, black community as well. So for the participants, um, I'm gonna make Begin with looking at physicians, um, sending out invitations to medical facilities in Hines County. Um, and if I can't get all the people I want, or if I feel like I need more people, I'm going to uh, attend conferences and visit medical practices in the area to recruit more physicians. Um, the incentive will be a chance to receive $500 in a cash prize. Uh, participants will then be emailed back a survey looking for their age, basic patient caseload, work setting, current clinical position duration. So design. So before the study, a black and better will come in, either hostile or friendly. The physicians will be given uh, the net, one description of the patient, black or white. Um, they will then have to examine the patient and then decide the course of treatment that they will use. Um, they also, uh, I believe important, that they give a reason why, so they'll be able to do that. Um, so they'll provide a reason why they chose their course of treatment. Um, the physicians will then do a standard race IAT to test for implicit and explicit bias. They'll also do a modern racism questionnaire that consists of 50 questions. And then a note will be used to analyze all my data. My budget, uh, the money for gas a month be a thousand dollars. I have two research assistants, um, so half of that will be split between both of them. Um, Two hundred dollars for recruitment supplies uh, for when I go to different conferences to get people. I need five hundred dollars for the cash prize. Um, five thousand for room to complete the test. Two thousand dollars for professional consultation for the net. Two confederates. Uh, so I'm going to need $300 a month for that, and the total amount being $11,600. And these are my references, and that concludes my presentation.